Hi, this is John Donovan, editor of Portable Design Magazine. I'm here today talking to Ian Drew, who is the VP of Marketing for ARM. Ian, I had some other questions to ask you, but yesterday got my attention. Uh, Warren was talking about uh, uh, a new focus on ARM's part on uh, the internet everywhere. The internet, uh, can you tell me about this web everywhere? Well, if you look at the number of smartphones that are shipped, there's more smartphones shipped this year than there are net, uh, laptop computers. And in the next 18 months, there'll be more smartphones shipped than laptops and PCs combined. Mm -hmm. So a number of different companies have come to us and said, how do we really enable the web on smartphones and on a lot, lot of portable devices? So we're working with the key browser, the key plugin companies, the operating systems to enable this. So you've seen announcements recently about the Adobe Open Screen Alliance where right. companies are coming together. You've seen um, Google announce their Chrome browser. Mm -hmm. You've seen Mozilla announce browsers on ARM as well. So we're seeing this big shift in web resources to have mobile everywhere, web 2.0 everywhere, and enabling a lot of devices. So we see this as a, as a key initiative moving forward because we see a lot more people wanting to have access to the web wherever they want, whenever they want. And the telecom operators are now prov can now provide data over the web services, which really helps them as well. Now, is that the, uh, from the operator's point of view, uh, uh, do you see um, them finally coming out with full service uh, with one, char one charge only so people can actually get all the data they want and do all the surfing they want? I think it's going to impact their business plans? I think it's going to be country by country. And right. each of the telecom operators are going to maximize their dollars country by country. So you'll see that in some countries and other countries will, will continue to be paid by the bit. But we're seeing, um, as a metrics, we, we look at uh, download of, downloads of web pages using the Opera mini browsers. Mm -hmm. And that's been rising significantly over the last 18 months. And that's really enabling some of these new services to be enabled as well. So I think country by country, telecom operators will charge what they have to to get the customers going. And to be honest about it, I, I think that's really going to be a regional thing as well. I think you'll see different regions, the emerging markets having different plans to the US and Europe. Okay. Well, from the, from the device point of view, uh, is this the, the beginning of uh, the mobile internet uh, devices really taking off? Or, or do you think that, because um, I mean, Intel's beating up a lot on, on cell phones as giving you an inferior uh, web experience, if you will. And um, although, as, as uh, Warren pointed out yesterday, it's one, if you have a 14-inch or 17-inch uh, a computer screen, you're necessarily going to have a different, with a five megabit per second download, you're necessarily going to have a different experience than if you have a, a two and a half inch screen that's got, that, that you can measure the download kilobits. Is it going to be, long question short, uh, mm -hmm. w do you think that uh, internet enabled mobile phones will improve enough that they'll really uh, take the place of mids and mids won't necessarily take off? Or will they coexist? Will mid, the real question is, will mids exist in my mind? Will it be one device or two? Hmm. And that is the question, right. I, and to be honest about it, I don't think anybody knows with their hand on their heart, will mids survive or not? Mids as a category was created by Intel because they, they saw and they tried to push down the <laughs> UMPC. The UMPC has never really that taken never up. Never got any traction. Never right. got any traction. Um, we're seeing smartphones with bigger and bigger screens. Do, do you classify them as mids because they have 3G modems and Wi-Fi in there? I don't know. I mean, uh, some, some people think of the, uh, uh, the, uh, the iPhone as the first generation mid. Well, you've got the iPhone, you've got Nokia N810s out there. Right. Um, you have Arcos in, uh, in Europe now, soon to launch in the US, the Arcos 5 and Arcos 7s. Mm. Very nice devices, all of which have some form of uh, extended internet access on there. Mm -hmm. I mean, on the Nokia N N810, you have full flash nine on there. So that one's a, that one, would you classify that as a mid or, or would you know. classify as a, as a smartphone? How would, you, how would you classify some of these devices? There will be a continuum of devices, of screen sizes. Mm -hmm. uh, there will be ones that fit in your pocket. There'll be ones that fit on your desk, all the way up to the 100 inch TVs. 
right. that you want to get connected as well. And you will have different architectural requirements, you'll have different software requirements and different user models for each of them. Okay. And I, I think there's going to be different business models wrapped around them as well. Is there any architectural reason why a, a smartphone, given a, given a, a large enough screen, uh, couldn't download, couldn't give you the same internet experience that you could get with a mid? No, there is no architectural difference. It's, okay. it's not a hardware problem, it's a software problem. And a lot of those software problems are being fixed. Tell me about the software aspect. You say it's a software problem. Well, it's, it's a browser and plugin problem. Okay. You have to make sure you have the full browser experience, you have to make, make sure you have the full plugin experience, mm -hmm. and those have to be ported onto the right architecture. And traditionally, because of the install base on PCs, the, the PC has been first. The phone got a mini version of it because it had smaller memory size, not as much bandwidth, but now we're seeing a lot of those software companies porting over to, to ARM over time. Okay, good. Yeah, I, one of the things that, uh, what about um, Adobe's Flash? I know one of the things that, uh, that Intel had pushed is that, okay, we're going to, this will be on, this will be on uh, uh, mids first, uh, and it's going to take a while before you have that capability on, on smartphones. Well, you have, you have Adobe Flash on a number of mids at the moment, like the uh, Nokia N810 mm -hmm. or the Arcos 9 device, both of which are ARM-based. So that proves Good that point. the architecture can right. support um, Adobe Flash 9. Okay. Now, what about the, uh, are you going to be able to get, uh, we were talking about download speed a little, uh, you know, a couple of minutes ago. Um, are you going to be able to really get full internet access and, and download it to, you, to your heart's content? Are you going to be able to get the speed over a cellular connection, or are you going to have to go to wi uh, look toward uh, Wi-Fi or WiMAX for that? I think you'll find LTE, 3G, significantly better than no, LTE, my, certainly. My, my, my edge phone. So yes, it, it's not going to be the same as, as your optical cable coming into the house and you are going to see some degradation on support. But um, running YouTube videos on a smaller screen takes a lot less data than running YouTube videos on a larger screen. Good point. So you're gonna ha we're going to have to scale and find out how to go make this happen. So the, the pipes coming into the phone, yes, they are important, but making sure the phone has all the right capabilities are equally as important as well. Okay, good. Well, I take it since um, that was the uh, mobile web access was a major focus of yesterday's talk. That's going to be a major focus for ARM going forward. Yes, it is. And the, the web 2.0 experience, the, the social networking and how you interact, and what you can do on the phone becomes very important. So we are working with each of the major standards on the, on the wireless infrastructure as well. Mm -hmm. So Wi-Fi, WiMAX, 3G, all support ARM, and we have capabilities both in base stations and uh, radios in that area as well. Right. Okay, Ian, how do you see the, uh, the industry changing over the next few years? Well, I think over the, good question, I think over the next few years, you're going to see a, a real growth in content provided on a lot of devices. People want to see um, handsets with the same capability of showing video and 3D and playing games as they do on a big screen or a smaller screen on a laptop. And they want to have that performance that lasts days by battery, not hours. They'll want to be able to surf the web wherever they want to and not have to find a hotspot or plug in somewhere, somewhere. They'll want to be able to make sure that they can do whatever they want on whatever screen size they're at, wherever they want. And I think the wherever is very, very important for people. And how is that going to be possible? You look at the power consumption of some of these devices. <laughs> That's I was going to ask. You're going to have to continually develop the treadmill of lower power devices. The half a watt SOCs will still be very, very important. You'll need to go into multi core. We'll need to go and work very closely on 32 and 28 nanometer high K metal gate processes mm -hmm. at the very low end of the fabrication geometries, all the way through then adding uh, different functionality to SOCs, making sure the SOCs are designed in a way that is flexible enough to go meet the requirements, but also has that capability of meeting specific demands, both in a graphics and in a video area. So I think there's still lots of work that we need to go do over the next five years, really to meet the demands of the perfect phone or the perfect mid device or the perfect device with anything with larger screens. Very good. 
Well, I made tremendous <laughs> gains over the last few years in terms of power management and uh, the ability to deliver multimedia over phones. Um, I look forward to the next few years and seeing what you've got up your sleeve. Well, thank you very much indeed, John. Wish you well. Thank you. Thank you. Take care.